So this is a clay mask and it's supposed to suck the oil out of your pores. So I have a few pores here, but watch when you get to my nose. <gasps> oh my God. Look at my chin. The mask that literally <laughs> broke the internet. Like, I, I mean, this has gone viral more times than I can count. Huge virality to this product. And it's because of that really visually appealing, jarring. It's like, yes, like this thing looks like it's working. We are talking today about the Caudalie Vinergetic C Plus Instant Detox Mask. I've tried it before several times. We had to DoorDash this product from Sephora. I didn't even know you could do that. We did it today. So today we're gonna to be reviewing this mask. Does this erase your pores? Does this help with pores? Does it suck out all of the toxins from your skin? We'll put this on, wear it for you, try it out, and try to make this video in less time than we need to rinse it off. <laughs> well, there we go. So reviewing viral skincare products, here we go. Here we go. All right, to start off, of course, we always start with packaging. So beautiful packaging. I like the wood cap. I do too. That's, you know what? Without the wood cap, it's very, very average, I'd say. Very nice, natural. It's got this natural mm -hmm. feel to it um, when you add any wood to it. Really kind of beautiful packaging. And I think Caudalie does that very, very well. I will say kind of a little, little brand heritage here about Caudalie. Um, a lot of deep roots in this brand. So this, this brand started out as a vineyard and they studied the benefits of plant polyphenols. And they were also studying the benefits of resveratrol, which we know is very beneficial when you when you drink it, but we also know that it's beneficial to the skin. Um, and then they were able to then extract other compounds that were also beneficial for dark spots. And so the brand kind of started around the benefits of grapes on the skin because of the vineyard, which is actually a really interesting brand story. I lean heavily on Dr. Shaw for the historicity of skincare. I love history. So, so when there's a strong history, I love it. And when you talk to the founders, I mean, they really believe in the benefits of these powerful ingredients that they found from their vineyard. So I love that story, but let's talk about this product in general. Let's do a little bit of an ingredient deep dive here. Okay, so starting out, clay masks. All clay masks sort of have the same principles. They have two ingredients, one or two ingredients that really help to kind of lift the dirt and debris out of your pores. And there are a lot of products like this, very similar to like the Aztec mm -hmm. clay mask that we've reviewed in the past. So this has kaolin clay and bentonite clay. So those are the two ingredients that are going to be doing most of the heavy lifting here. And then when you look at the other ingredients here, we have ingredients ingredients like alcohol, which can be drying, but this is a product that's meant to be washed off and not left on the whole time um, and shouldn't really cause too much of an issue, especially with the glycerin base here. Some people don't like alcohol in their products. Like if you notice that the product is stinging, you have that type of sensitive skin where you get a stinging sensation when you apply products. Alcohol is one of the ingredients that can cause that. So definitely keep that in mind. And then we look at bergamot oil, lavender oil, linalool, limonene. You know, technically if you go into the website, you know, they'll call it fragrance free, but of course there's a lot of fragrance in this product, right? So lemony and linalool are fragrances. They produce fragrant compounds, right? I'm just gonna go on a rant here real quick because this has actually been on my mind a lot over the last week. We're seeing a lot of fragrance free, even seeing more of this thing called synthetic fragrance free, where not only might they have fragrant ingredients, where bergamot, like historically, any dermatologist would identify that immediately and be like, oh, remember bergamot oil, because there's like bergamot dermatitis, specifically from this oil, that's an allergic contact reaction. But then with the synthetic fragrance free, with this product doesn't do, it just has fragrance free overall, but synthetic fragrance free may not be even better because you'll see synthetic fragrance free and then in the ingredient list, fragrance. And it's just natural fragrance, but it's still this proprietary fragrant blend that can be full of allergens, synthetic or not, it really makes no difference in terms of allergenicity. All right, so you're meant to cleanse and then apply this mask. Yep, so we'll go cleanse and then we'll put this back on. So I have my skincare headband on uh, here. TM. So uh, so this is what I use because uh, I don't like it when my hair gets stuff in it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm actually kind of excited because my favorite video that we've ever shot was the Aztec clay mask. I've been trying to get him to do like cooking shows and- Wait, First of all, smell this. I like it, it's subtle. Again, going back into brand heritage, fragrance is actually a very important part of the Caudalie brand heritage story because this is a French brand and you have to remember that all the great perfumeries in the world are in France. And so, you know, the fragrance and the experience of skincare is a core principle of this brand. So if you're looking for fragrance-free products, they have some, but it's not core to this brand. This co this the, the core of this brand is grapes, um, it's resveratrol, it's plant polyphenols and the benefits of those ingredients. And then the experience of products that smell good. 
They smell like a spa. So not for that sensitive skin necessarily. I feel like I need to qualify my rant now. This is not like a problem with this brand. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's just no, something no. I've experienced a lot lately. I'm just, I, I, I think I'm starting, what I'm starting to do while I apply this mask is put skincare brands into different categories, hmm. right? Like every brand is not Cerave Vanny Cream Vanny and CeraVe, Cerave. right? Like they have different functions in the skincare world. I think they have a different audience that wants to consume those things. 100% on board with that. I, this is kind of hard without a mirror. This is tough. So we're supposed to leave it on, let it dry according to the video. But I don't know if we're supposed to double layer. Maybe, maybe we're using it wrong. Maybe we're using too much. It's hard without a mirror. So give us some grace here. Can't really see ourselves. All right. So now we wait. Now we wait. How long do we wait? Five to 10 minutes. Just staring at each Just other? Just staring at each other. It's like the good old days. <laughs> Let's keep talking about this while it dries. Yeah, let's okay. do that. So quick review of the feel of the product. Mm -hmm. It smells nice, but remember it's fragrance. Second, um, the texture of it dries very quickly and it has a little bit of a pink color to it. So price is $42 yep. for the mask, which of course puts it above the Aztec clay mask and potentially into the category. I think the Kiehl's clay mask is about a similar price range. Um, I would say it's a little bit on the higher end of price compared to the other clay masks that are out there. I agree. Going back to the brand itself, I think it makes sense though. Because when you, I think when you get into brands that bank on elegance or even some of the sensorial portions of skincare, where it's kind of like an experience and treat yourself, paying a little more for some of the extra fluff and flair, I'm okay with too. You have brands like Biosance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well, where I love the products. They're a little more pricey, but I love it. I never, yeah, I, like I wouldn't expect something from them to be like $9.99, you know? So right. I think it works for the brand itself. I think it works for the brand's histor history and the product overall. It is a little more pricey. The Aztec clay mask was I think $12 when I just looked. Um, functionally, both would have similar benefits. And um, if you look at this, the, the product is already very dirty from my hands getting all over it. So just keep that in mind. Which is also my knock on tinted sunscreens. Yeah, tinted sunscreens get over everything. Like one tip I'll give you while our, our mask is drying is if you're on vacation at the beach, tinted sunscreens maybe not the best option. They literally get over everything. They get over your clothes, they get over your towels, they get all over the bag that you're carrying them in. And then they're just, this is starting to really Dry my face. It is very dry. I like feel weird moving my face now. So I agree. So tinted sunscreens too, just while we're on this like rabbit hole trail, is um, they don't work well functionally for active wear. Like surfing, who cares? I'm in the water, right? But yeah. when I'm running, because I run often. <laughs> yeah. I run often. <laughs> this isn't natural, y'all. <laughs> I guess it is, but still, it's hard work. But you know, you rub your hand, like, so you're sweating, basically. You're gonna play tennis, whatever. You're gonna play basketball, tennis, football. Tinted sunscreens, you rub your arms on your eyes, wipe sweat away from your eyes all the time. It gets everywhere. I've Every light shirt that I've ever owned is now ruined because of tinted sunscreen. I like not my hair, I still use them, but it's dry. Let me see your pores. There, I see yours. So here's a close up of my face. I don't know if the camera can focus on huh. it, but you can basically see that it's essentially, that it is highlighting my pores for sure. So it's accentuating those, it's showing you where they are. And I think a lot of creators see this and it's very, very visually jarring on social media. And so you're like, wow, this thing is sucking out all the gunk from my pores. And uh, that's amazing. But really I think what's happening probably is the oils interacting with the mask creating this appearance. Or the mask is just drying in and of itself. I'm not convinced that's not the primary thing we're seeing. I mean, I do believe that, you know, these clay mask things that do suck out impurities. Uh, I mean, like, I don't like that word, but like toxins, which I like that word even less, but it does suck out the gunk from our pores and our skin. Sure, charcoal, the same thing now, but I, I do think the, m the majority of what we see here is just the product drying. Dry in the pores. Um, but it's drying and highlighting the area around the pores. So I paint. And you so paint when you over paint it. over a textured surface, even a canvas, especially if you're using a non-traditional canvas, the same effect occurs where the you might have to layer upon layer for paint to get into the divots within the canvas itself. That's just my okay. theory here. So either it's it's moving around the pores or it the oil interaction. Which is also, I think, very we don't reasonable. Know. Nobody knows. Maybe they do know. It's very difficult to move my face now. It is. It's, uh, hey, this is like, this is Botox. We just discovered this hack. This is your Botox alternative. Botox in a bottle. Botox um, in a bottle. <laughs> let's go wash it off and come back. All right, we'll go wash this off. <laughs> okay, we're back. We washed our faces. Um, how you feeling? Uh, skin feels a little tight. You know? Feels a little tight, a little dry. Yeah. He's looking pretty red and irritated right now. 
And I'm not going to lie, I've been clowning him because he made fun of me for two years <laughs> about my sensitive skin, my sensitive eyelids. And now he has sensitive skin because of something he tried and now he's irritated. Uh, yeah. I feel bad, but I also... I think you should feel bad. I feel like this one was your idea. <laughs> It was my idea. <laughs> so overall, um, you know, I think I always feel really dry after using these masks. Um, and so I think for oily skin, you may really like that feeling. For me, um, I have kind of a little bit more combination dry skin, so it's a little bit drying for me. And I probably only use it, when I always tell you that I use the salicylic acid mask from The Ordinary, I only use it in my T-zone because I have combination skin and that's where I get the oiliest. And I, I don't put it all over because I tend to get dry on my cheeks in general. So if you have more, more dry skin, I would kind of focus on this area here. And that being said, um, I may be allergic to lavender. <laughs> And I kind of know that I am, to be honest, before applying this mask, so I definitely risked it. Uh, but right now I haven't had any sense of allergy yet, um, but I'll definitely update the video with some text or something if I end up having an issue with this. Overall, I think it performed like it's supposed to perform. Yeah, agreed. Overall, for mask goes, I think I actually liked it while I was using it. Right now it's highly questionable, I'm pretty concerned, but um, for someone who doesn't have an allergy problem, I think it functioned well as a mask. Yeah, I think if you are sensitive to fragrance and you know we're making a recommendation to you, there are a lot of other products on the market that would function similarly. This may have had the most dramatic effect around the pores as far as appearance is concerned, like the way that it looked while it was working. I think it probably worked better than the Indian clay mask personally, hmm. as far as like removing oils and kind of cleaning out my pores as far as like how I feel right now. That's not scientific, it's just how I feel. But I think that overall, you know, with the, the allergens that are in there and then the price point, there are probably products that are safer and less expensive. So I would say that probably the ordinary salicylic acid mask it has the addition of having these, the clays that can lift away the oils, but also salicylic acid to dissolve those oils. And it's fragrance free and it's a lower price, I think would be a good alternative. That being said, the fragrance was a nice fragrance. It was, I enjoyed my experience up until a point. So, I mean, agreed, I think it's enjoyable. If you're looking for a budget option, the ordinary is a great option. But I think this product targets people that are looking for more of that spa type experience and it definitely gives you that experience. That's why everything from the, the wooden cap to the way that the product smells and the appearance of it when it's on your skin and how tight it gets, gives you that feeling that your skincare products are really working for you. So overall, this would be sort of middle for me. I understand why it went viral. I think it is visually and, and physically a very interesting experience. Um, but again, I think there are probably better alternatives. Approved-ish for the right person? Approved for the right person. I think it functions how it's supposed to function, but pretty much a middle recommendation. I understand why people love it, um, but it's probably not something I would use regularly. Yep, agreed. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you next time.